Hello everyone, amateur meteorologist, first one here. Uh, today is May 9th, 2020, and we have some big weather news to talk about. We have an, un or not unprecedented, but very unusual Arctic outbreak for the month of May, and hence the title May Freeze. So let's get right into the video. This right now is the NAM uh, 12Z model run for today. Uh, this is a 500 millibar geopotential height, and as you can see, we have very anonymously below average heights right here in the eastern part of the country and the reason is in once you get past the winter months of january february march and december you generally don't see temperature variations this extreme especially after april because you have higher wa uh, water vapor val values excuse me and you also have the sun being much more powerful so you don't really see these extremes and you definitely don't see this much amplification of the jet stream past April. Usually the jet stream enters a more zonal flow, you'll get a more moderation of the pattern, and you generally start to see the establishment of uh, ridging in the uh, southeast and a generally warmer pattern, not really this extremely amplified pattern with uh, uh, very uh, strong temperature deviations from the west and the east or the east and the west. Uh, but for this year we do have this uh, very unusual uh, jet stream amplification. We, we even have basically a polar vortex split. We have a piece of the polar vortex coming down all the way into the United States, which is this thing right here. And you have the polar vortex basically split into three. Uh, that one one of those pieces is now coming down. Three. One, this is the biggest piece of energy. And so because of this, you're seeing high temperatures and temperatures in general east of the Mississippi being very below average for the last two or three days and for the next day. And so this is the NAM now surface re uh, reflectivity. This is valid for later tonight. And as you can see, that high pressure really settles in into the eastern part of the country uh, near the Mid-Atlantic. And that's going to allow for those winds to really die down. All that uh, divergence uh, is really going to allow for the air mass to become stable. Very little winds. That low pressure is really moved offshore. So the stronger winds will only be concentrated here. While this area sees a lot of very calm winds, clear skies meaning that this is the perfect setup for a very chilly and very cold Sunday morning as most of, you, most of you get up in North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, and Kentucky. And so I will not be surprised if we see hundreds of more records being broken tomorrow, uh, especially in the Mid-Atlantic and southern portions of the Northeast due to this extremely uh, anom anonymously uh, high pressure present over the region. And now this is the National Weather Service's uh, all uh, hazards map. And as you can see, we have freeze and frost advisories, uh, freeze warnings in the purple, frost advisor advisories in the light blue or the medium blue. And that extends all the way from Ohio down into the southern states of uh, Alabama and Georgia, extending through South Carolina and all the way down to southern North Carolina, stretching up the coast to uh, northern Maryland. And this is quite... Uh, unusual, again, for this time of year, but it is happening. The last time we had an outbreak this thorough and sufficient in the month of May was the year of 1966. So yeah, definitely going back a long way uh, until we had an outbreak of this magnitude of Arctic air in the eastern portion of the country in May. And now here is the uh, current radar as of 2.25 p.m. You can see a bunch of snow squalls as we see some really steep lapse rates uh, over the northeast. And this is just allowing for a lot of snow uh, squalls to develop. And even grapple is falling in many por uh, portions. And last night as that Arctic front came through, we had some very strong gusty winds because of the, the, the uh, temperature difference between those two air masses. We had some very strong gusty winds, even hail, uh, and, and some snow squalls behind that. Uh, which is not unprecedented and it does happen from time to time, especially in the Northeast. But again, very unusual. Many mountain locations saw two, three, even four inches of snow, while uh, outlying areas saw up to an inch of snow uh, in states like Pennsylvania, New York, uh, Vermont, and New Hampshire. And now here is the, uh, this is provided courtesy of coolweather.com. And these are some of the records that were broken last night. This doesn't have all of them, but it just shows you the expanse of this unusually cold uh, outbreak of uh, air, which is just, it's basically going even west of the Mississippi, affecting states like Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, Kansas, and stretching all the way east to the major I-95 corridor, including Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., and down to Richmond. 
And now here is the NAM 3 kilometer 2 meter air temperature forecast for tomorrow morning, Sunday at 10Z. You can see it has Washington, D.C. at a low of 38, Richmond 38, uh, upper 30s for Southern Virginia, upper 30s to lower to mid 40s in North Carolina, and lower 30s in the northwestern portion of the state. I actually think the model is a bit underdone here. I think that we will likely see temperatures into the lower 30s and even upper 20s in portions of Virginia and even stretching down to along uh, I-95. I think even D.C. has a chance of going uh, at the freezing mark, if not slightly above it. And places north of D.C. will likely go into the upper 20s uh, tonight as we really see those calmer winds, that c perfect setup for radiational cooling to really take place. And we really will see those temperatures take a nosedive. So after a very warm March and a very warm start to April, uh, we had record early uh, leaf outs and budding for many of the trees and vegetation for the southeast. Uh, stretching all the way down from Texas to the mid-Atlantic, but now it's essentially a complete reversal for the month of May. We have unusually cold temperatures, definitely uh, confusing and hampering the trees, but luckily uh, vegetation and trees also look at the uh, daylight, amount of daylight present. So it's not going to be too much of a problem, but definitely unusual or uh, or notice or uh, significant to see a record warm March leading to a record early breakout and then this unusually cold May uh, di directly uh, conflicting with the pattern in March. And this, again, just goes to show that you can have a really cold winter, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a really cold summer. Or you can have a record warm winter, but that doesn't necessarily mean the summer will also be very warm. And now here is the uh, NAM uh, low temperature forecast for uh, the Northeast. You can see it's also showing upper 20s for these areas right here. And this is a more broader look for the southeast by the NAM, showing 40s touching down even to the southern states uh, right here. And now here are the National Weather Service temperatures. I think this is more on par uh, with, with the NAM being a little bit too under-aggressive. The National Weather Service really highlights the widespread lower 30s that are going to spread throughout the Mid-Atlantic and into the northeast uh, tonight. And now moving on beyond that, after this cold uh, outbreak moves through, which should be by about tomorrow, uh, in fact, on Sunday, many temperatures will, many areas will actually see high temperatures reaching the mid to upper 60s in the mid-Atlantic, and that's because in May, uh, you have these colder air masses modifying very quickly because of the high sun angle and the higher uh, water vapor values in the atmosphere. So while this is a very uh, anomalous, or excuse me, anomal... Uh, whatever, I can't say that word, but even though this colder outbreak is very uh, prudent and very significant, it's not going to stay as long as it would if this was winter because the air mass is modifying very quickly. And by May 16th, which is a mere six or seven days from now, the European ensemble is showing actually significant ridging building in the southeast, in the, uh, the mid-Atlantic. And this is more climatologically normal for the eastern part of the country for this time of year. You have that ridge building over here. Uh, like this, and that's going to allow for warm uh, temperatures to flood the northeast and southeast corridor with um, high humidity levels and dew points coming in with it, allowing for higher pWatt values, and generally a more uh, typical pattern for uh, the middle of May. And you can see that jet stream, which was once very amplified, or which, which was once very amplified like this, is now going into that more zonal state like this. The polar jet stream is retreating north by the middle of May, and things are returning to normal. And we even have a little bit of a trough right here, and so that would indicate potential instability in the Great Plains region. And for the most part, the month of May has been very, very uh, peaceful in terms of severe weather. Month is really May is really the month where you have the most uh, tornadoes, severe weather, and uh, severe weather outbreaks in the spring season. But so far, everything has been very tame. I think that's going to change as we go to the middle of the month with these conflicting air masses right here, troughing here, ridging here, and that's all going to meet in this region right here. I think we could have a pretty significant severe weather uh, or a couple of pretty significant severe weather days going uh, into the next week. And if we go to the GEFS temperature anomaly, you can see that cold air mass leaves, and we start to see the building of ridging in the southeast, and even a general uh, warming pattern over most of the country as that uh, polar jet stream retreats to the north, and you have the opportunity for the high pressures and ridging to really build into the center of the country. 
And now this is the G GFS ensemble for May 15th. You can see it's showing a, a similar situation to the European. It doesn't really have that significant troughing here. It's, there's a, a hint of it, but the GF, uh, GFS ensemble is also a bit weaker on the ridging that's going to develop in the eastern part of the country. And I'm inclined right now to follow the European. Uh, I definitely think the GFS can have a little bit of a little bit of a bias with a delaying the uh, pattern reversal into a warmer uh, and more t uh, May typical uh, setup. So I definitely think by the middle of May, we are going to see that return to a typical pattern. We're going to see a major warm up for next weekend. And in fact, many locations in the mid-Atlantic will be in the 80s uh, on you know, for the May 15th weekend, which is definitely good news for people that have been uh, missing the warm weather that they should be seeing right now. And now if we go to the European Ensemble, the EPS, for May 19th, we can see something very significant here. We, we can actually see the model portraying an omega block. We have a big ridge right here, very strong ridge, big trough right here, right? So you have a very strong trough right here, a big ridge right here, and then a bit of a trough again right here. So that is an omega block. And so that means the center of the country, especially the northern part, is going to be anonymously warm very warm temperatures, and I think the main area that will really any, even see any uh, major storms or anything like that will be down here, as you have that area being under the ridge, and also over here, the pattern looks quite wet in the western part of the country for the latter part of May, as you have that omega block taking place. And the GFS, is, the GFS ensemble is showing something similar to the ridge being in the center of the country, omega block with the trough right here, so probably a wet pattern over here, thunderstorms in this area, potentially severe weather, but nothing too significant, and anonymously warm conditions in the northern part of the United States. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, this. May freeze is going to be ending in a couple of days, if not just tomorrow, uh, but we still have one more very cold night to go through, so enjoy it. This is very unusual. Uh, and so... Stay warm, everyone. I hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you next time.